glad you are here for another view into the collection. I'm Amy Johnson, Curator of Collections at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, and in this segment I will share with you some of the recent donations made to our permanent collection. Respected and well-loved Pueblo artists continue to wow us with their creations. Whether they are formed with natural clays or rendered on paper, with watercolor brush strokes, each is produced with love and generations of artistic aptitude as inspiration. The lifespan of a work of art carries its message and beauty from the artist's kitchen table to the walls of museums and into our homes. Oftentimes, during the lifespan of an artist's creation, the work makes its way to us. As the caretakers of a diverse and culturally significant collection of Pueblo creative output, our greatest task involves ongoing collections care to maintain long-term preservation for future generations. We rely on donations to enrich our collection, placing an emphasis on Pueblo-made works of art. Today, I wish to share with you a selection of donations made to the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center in recent years. In 2022, a gentleman from Minnesota donated this lovely gouache on paper of a buffalo dance. Painted in 1954 by Rafael Medina of Zia Pueblo, in it he depicts two male Pueblo dancers with a buffalo maiden in the middle. Each dancer is mid-step, in tune with a drum and singers not depicted here, but whose beat and songs are easily evoked by the movement of the dancers. In the style of the Santa Fe Indian School easel painters, the dancers are set prominently on paper with no foreground or background to provide depth. Without that, we can focus on the details captured in the dancers' kilts, belts, jewelry, and movements. For those of us familiar with the Buffalo Dance and our Pueblo Dance regalia, we recognize the significance of capturing details such as the Avanyu serpent wrapping the kilts on the men and the fine embroidery on the buffalo maiden's top. A reverence for Avanyu and its association with flowing waters is equal to that of the buffalo headdress and bows carried by the men. Also of importance is the artist's objective to capture in detail a dance he surely watched many times throughout his life. He signed his work with the date of January 27, 1954. Seventy years have passed since he put a brush to paper so we can now place eyes on his work and appreciate his skill and creativity. Medina gifted his buffalo dance painting to the uncle of the donor who shared with me that his uncle was a social worker for Catholic Social Services and worked at the Pueblo of Zia. The painting remained in his family's possession until it finally found a home with us. This painting was donated in memory of Cyril and Florence Misenko. In late 2022, we were approached by Pueblo potter Glenn Gomez to consider accepting this uniquely formed micaceous jar. We have very few contemporary works in clay, and this was an easy decision for us to make when Glenn made the offer. His father is from Taos Pueblo and his mother is from Powaki Pueblo. He titled his jar Geometry of Life, and it was fired in an oxygen reduction atmosphere, which gives it the black color. The flecks of mica shine through, and as you look closer, you see that he formed this piece out of three different amorphous shapes that meet in a narrow, triangular opening topped with a conch shell wrapped in soft white leather. Glenn's mother is the well-known Powake Pueblo potter, Cordy Gomez, whose life story is one of Pueblo resilience. In the 1930s, 
She was one of 13 Powake tribal members who returned to their land in New Mexico after leaving due to smallpox, drought, and the expanding settler population. The Pueblo of Powake were given land grants and in 1936 became a federally recognized tribe. Her journey as a potter began when she met Santa Clara Pueblo potter Rose Naranjo, who told her, quote, if she worked with clay, there would always be food on the table, end quote. Hence, Glenn, one of Cordy and Randolph Gomez's six children, learned from his mother how to gather, process, and form vessels from natural clay available in their homeland. They often worked together to gather the clay and create vessels for sale. Glenn started working with micaceous clay in 1988 and received a degree from the Institute of American Indian Art in Santa Fe. He donated this astounding work in memory of his mother, Cordy Gomez. Next, we have a beautiful acrylic on canvas painting by DeHaven Solomon Chaffins. The donor traveled with the painting to New Mexico from Oregon. She said she purchased it in 2000 directly from DeHaven at a fundraising event for parents reaching out. DeHaven is from the Laguna and Zuni Pueblos and her work is recognizable due to her stylized figures, mesas, and dragonflies painted in layered rich colors. In this painting is depicted a stylized female figure wearing a tablita, which is worn by women for certain Pueblo dances. The figure also wears three necklaces and her face and shoulders are painted a rich palette of yellow and gold colors that nicely complement the space around her painted in blue and purple hues. She titled the painting, Praying for a Good Harvest, and one sees the connection of the corn maiden between the sky and the earth. A line of the yellow from the corn maiden's body reaches all the way down to mounds of the earth from, from which corn stalks emerge. I love how DeHaven finds ways to combine the earth and sky and how humans intersect with both. In April of this year, we were contacted by a woman in Ohio who shared that she wanted to donate a painting by Santa Clara Pueblo artist, Pablita Velarde. She used to live in New Mexico and was familiar with the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. Before seeing the painting and after hearing the story about how she became the caretaker of this painting, I was immediately intrigued. Here is what she relayed to me, quote, in 1997, my friend wished to give me a gift. The gift was to be a painting by Pablita Velarde, whose work I loved very much. My friend had grown up in Santa Fe and was a mutual friend of a woman from Santa Clara who knew Pablita. She asked if Pablita would do a painting for me and she agreed. When asked about what it should be, Pablita was told that I liked to bake bread. On October 7th, 1997, the painting was completed, framed and ready to be picked up. My two friends and I went to her house to meet her and receive the painting. She was a lovely and wonderfully kind soul who welcomed us into her studio in the house. She showed me the painting and told me this story from her childhood growing up in Santa Clara. Bread baking day was a real special occasion. All the children would anxiously wait for the women to take the bread out of the ovens. They would all gather around and as she said, the children would pretend to be starving and look as pathetic as possible so that the women would take pity on them and give them some of the fresh bread. She pointed out the little girl in the orange dress in the middle of the painting and said, that's me. End quote. Pablita painted a vibrant array of children, aunties, mothers, and an uncle chopping wood in the background. A beehive-shaped orno or bread oven is set prominently in the middle. As a woman who grew up at the Pueblo of Isleta, I happily concur that bread baking day is a special occasion. Nothing beats the smell of freshly baked Indian bread. 
The reward for all the effort made to knead and ready the dough and waiting patiently for the fire inside to heat up the orno is then tasting that first chunk of freshly baked bread. I love everything about this painting. The colors she mixed to detail the clothing, the numerous tiny stipples that accent the earth under mostly bare feet, the perfectly round and baked oven bread, and the joy on the face of the young boy graciously accepting the fresh bread and the many faces of others eagerly awaiting for their cut, the mother walking with her baby on her back, all of these elements combine to create a well-orchestrated work of art. We are fortunate to be the recipients of such a meaningful and expressive painting. Not long after the bread baking painting was donated, a donor in Arizona reached out to offer an entirely different work, also by Pablito Velarde. It is estimated that this was painted in the 1970s and was purchased directly from Pablita by the donor's mother. In contrast to the previous Pablita painting, here we are treated to her skill at grinding and mixing natural minerals to create a palette of tans accented with black applied to masonite board. She painted a stylized roadrunner standing in front of a yucca plant. The effect of the naturally ground minerals gives it an earthy and organic feel, while the composition itself is playful, warm, and visually sophisticated. Pablita spent her lifetime painting, and we are grateful to have two of her distinctive works added to our collection. Finally, I want to share a beautifully formed polychrome bowl. This fine bowl was made by a Laguna and Acoma Pueblo potter. According to the donor, she says, quote, my sister transferred to University of New Mexico in the fall of 1973 as a junior to study anthropology. During her first semester, she visited Sky City and stopped to look at items spread on a blanket to sell. She bought this bowl for about 50 to 75 cents and gave it to me. I loved the bowl immediately and have kept it for the last 50 years. Now I would like it to go home where others can enjoy it. This small bowl is a welcome addition to our collection. I love that it brought so much joy to the woman who donated it to us. When I informed her that it arrived safely, she wanted me to be sure and tell the bowl she said hello. So I did. A myriad of designs are painted on its exterior, each repeated three times around the bowl. It is signed on the bottom with the initials FHA, Laguna Acoma, and the date of 1973-1974. I like to imagine the potter giving the bowl life up there on the mesa at Acoma, where it caught the eye of the donor's sister. Its journey from the mesa at Acoma Pueblo to live with the donor in Tennessee and finally finding its way back to its homeland is a familiar story. We are fortunate to learn the stories associated with the works of art donated to the Cultural Center and I am grateful for playing a small part in carefully selecting additions to our growing collection. Thank you and see you next time for another segment of A View into the Collection.